TV7 Israel News is made possible thanks to your generous donations. Shalom, good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcast to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. Progress has been made in the nuclear talks between Iran and world powers in Vienna. Iranian proxies are seemingly exacerbating sporadic attacks against installations that house U.S. troops in both Syria and Iraq. The Organization for the Prohibition of Chemical Weapons says that Damascus is not truthful about its reports to the agency. Progress has been made in the nuclear talks between Iran and the so-called P5 plus 1, including the United States, Russia, China, France, Britain plus Germany, taking place in Vienna. According to two European diplomats familiar with the insights of discussions taking place, a limited change in attitude by the Iranian delegation has allowed for some progress, yet wide-ranging gaps remain on almost every issue of contention. Nevertheless, in line with its intelligence assessment, Israeli officials have increasingly come to believe that the nuclear negotiations in Vienna will ultimately culminate in an agreement. Consequently, Israel's security establishment is working to prepare for a projected scenario in which Tehran's regional proxies will gain significant tailwind by an influx of funds, which are currently frozen under stringent U.S. sanctions, all the while, Jerusalem's diplomatic corps is extensively engaged in efforts to limit the scope of concessions likely to be adopted by world powers. Among others, Israeli Foreign Minister Yair Lapid received a phone call from his American counterpart Antony Blinken late on January 5th, during which challenges posed by Iran were raised. Subsequently, in a State Department statement, it was noted that Secretary Blinken reiterated the administration's ironclad commitment to Israel's security. Prior to the conversation between the top diplomats of both Washington and Jerusalem, State Department spokesman Ned Price acknowledged in a telephone briefing that some modest progress has been achieved in the talks of last week, while asserting further that the U.S. hopes to build on that progress during the ongoing negotiations currently taking place in the Austrian capital. The State Department spokesman went on to couple the U.S. administration's hope with a warning to the Ayatollah regime, stressing, quote, if we do not soon reach an understanding on mutual return to compliance, Iran's accelerating nuclear steps will increasingly diminish non-proliferation benefits of the JCPOA, which is the acronym for the technical term of the so-called 2015 nuclear agreement. Price continued by stressing that even if there has been some progress, the fundamental situation really remains. The necessity for Iran to exercise restraint in its nuclear program and pursue negotiations in Vienna seriously. It is important to highlight that the main challenge from the perspective of the United States and its three European allies, including France, Britain and Germany, is a resounding lack of trust in the Ayatollah regime. Nevertheless, according to Berlin's new foreign minister, Annalena Bayerbock, who was hosted by her American counterpart Antony Blinken in Washington for the first time in her new capacity, the time remaining before Tehran's nuclear advancement renders the JCPOA obsolete is being utilized to try and revitalize the agreement. We are pulling in the same direction when it comes to Iran and the JCPOA. The um, discussions and negotiations in Iran are entering a crucial phase. Iran has squandered a lot of trust and there is not much time, but we intensively use this time together in Vienna it is important to know that while the United States is engaged with Iran in nuclear negotiations in Vienna, Iranian proxy militias have stepped up attacks against U.S. troops in Iraq. For a third confirmed incident, an unmanned aerial system laden with explosives with a flight trajectory toward the Ain al-Assad Air Force Base, which houses U.S. service members, was intercepted by aerial defense systems. And while the U.S.-led International Coalition for Operation Inherent Resolve confirmed the repeated attacks against installations housing U.S. troops by Iranian militias and emphasized its resolve to continue to conduct defense actions, 
It stopped short from confirming local Iraqi reports about aerial strikes targeting Iranian proxy militias of the Iraqi Hashta Shabi alliance in both Syria and Iraq. TV7 could not immediately corroborate the reported strikes. It is important to explain that the escalation of violence by Iranian proxy militias comes as the Islamic Republic commemorates the targeted killing of the Islamic Revolutionary Guards Quds Force commander Qasem Soleimani and leader of the Iranian proxy Kataib Hezbollah Abu Mahdi al muhandes According to Ayatollah regime supporters who flooded the gravesite of the assassinated Iranian general, the killing of Soleimani instigated unity among Islamist groups who are determined to seek revenge. Terror و شهادت سردار حاج قاسم سلیمانی و یارانش تران فکر کرد که با از بین مردن اینا مقاومت تموم میشه و سردار سلیمانی از بین میره بخ دیگه چیزی نق باقی نمیمونه اما خون ایشون بیشتر از زنده بودنش به مقاومت بها داد و مردم رو منسجم کرد مردم ما خیلی از روز شهادت آش خواستم واقعا دردمندند واقعا یه ضربه محکم از دولت میخوان به دهن آمریکا از سراسر ایران و سراسر جهان برای زیارتش دارن میان همین دیروز فریزا بود از 63 کشور اومدن برای زیارتش زنده بودن شهید رو میرسونه Among the referred to delegations to visit the grave site included leaders of the Islamist Hamas and Palestinian Islamic Jihad which are closely collaborating with the Ayatollah regime. Meanwhile, at a memorial ceremony that was held by the Islamic Revolutionary Guards, the man who replaced Qasem Soleimani as commander of the Quds Force Brigadier General Ismail Khani asserted that the United States was mistaken to think that the targeted killing would halt Iran's progress in fulfilling Soleimani's plans for the region, including by ending any U.S. presence. ما سبکی رو که جنایتکاران دارند رو نداریم اما سبک متعلق به خودمون رو داریم و به حول و قوه الهی این مسیر پر افتخار مقاومت همچنان ادامه پیدا خواهد کرد و کسانی که تو این راه مانع بودند و هستند شمشیر برنده مقاومت According to Western intelligence officials who spoke to TV7 on condition of anonymity, Iran aims to exacerbate sporadic attacks by its proxy militias against U.S. troops throughout the region until Washington's eventual decision to withdraw, which would consequently be proclaimed as an Iranian victory. And while U.S. troops in Iraq, which amount to roughly 2,500 service members in an advisory capacity, are stationed there at the request of the Baghdad central government, the Iranian proxies in Iraq are seemingly stepping up pressure on authorities to end all Western presence. <laughs> كل الناس سمعنا وكل العراق يسمعنا الريد أمريكا ما ظل بالعراق ولا سفار الريد إحنا نحمي نفسنا بنفسنا. Turning to the United Nations headquarters in New York, where the World Body's disarmament chief Izumi Nakamitsu presented the Security Council with an update on the implementation of Resolution 2118 regarding the elimination of Syria's chemical weapons program. At this stage. The declaration submitted by the Syrian Arab Republic cannot be considered accurate and complete in accordance with the Chemical Weapons Convention. The OPCW Secretariat has not yet received the requested declaration from the Syrian Arab Republic on all undeclared types and quantities of nerve agents produced and or weaponized at the former chemical weapons production facility that was declared by the Syrian Arab Republic 
as never having been used to produce and or weaponize chemical warfare agents. I have also been advised that the OPCW Technical Secretariat, Secretariat has not yet received a response from the Syrian Arab Republic on the request for information and documentation regarding the damage caused during an attack on 8th of June 2021 to a military facility that housed a declared former chemical weapons production facility. U.S. Ambassador to the U.N. Linda Thomas-Greenfield seized the opportunity for her part to echo the U.N.'s disarmament chief over Syria's untrustworthiness and warn members of the Security Council not to fall for Syria's deceit. We continue to witness Syria's complete disregard for its obligations and deliberate attempts to delay and obstruct the OPCW's work. The OPCW still assesses that Syria's declaration cannot be considered accurate and complete in accordance with the obligations under the Chemical Weapons Convention and Security Council Resolution 2118. We should not be fooled by Syria's veneer of cooperation while it continues its obfuscating narrative. The Russian Deputy Ambassador to the UN, Dmitry Polyansky, responded to the strong comments directed at the Damascus regime by questioning the impartiality of the Organization for the Prohibition of Chemical Weapons, a notion equally stressed by the Syrian envoy who attended the meeting. Так называемое сирийское химдосье за последнее время окончательно лишилось даже видимости беспристрастного и объективного выяснения фактов, которые могли бы подкрепить утверждение о применении химоружия в этой стране. Теперь это не более чем еще один рычаг антисирийской критики для наших западных коллег, готовых на все, чтобы доказать недоказуемое. على رفضها لأي تشكيك في الإعلان السوري أو في تعاونها مع المنظمة وأمانتها الفنية وتستنكر إطلاق اتهامات باطلة مستندة لمعلومات مغلوطة أو قفز إلى استنتاجات مبنية على لغات تحتمل التلاعب والتأويل وافتراضية الترجيح دون أي قرائن مادية تؤكد سوريا أن بعض المسائل الفنية التي تتم مناقشتها بين اللجنة الوطنية السورية والأمانة الفنية للمنظمة ترتبط بتفسيرات علمية متعددة وتخضع للنقاش والبحث وهي عملية لا يمكن حسمها بشكل سريع أو انتقائي. It is interesting to know that according to a report published by the Washington Post last month, Israel had allegedly struck chemical weapons facilities in Syria twice over the past two years in a campaign to prevent Syria from renewing chemical weapons production, a report subsequently confirmed to TV7 by Western intelligence officials. Thank you for watching us, and we apologize for the delay in tonight's broadcast. In light of mandatory maintenance work that will take place in the building where our facilities are situated, TV7 Israel News will regrettably not broadcast tomorrow night. Nevertheless, Colonel Miri Eisen will take my place to host Friday's Jerusalem Studio episode, deliberating Israel's military preparedness. Separately, as part of TV7 Israel's prayer initiative, I would like to encourage you this evening to join the team and me here in Jerusalem to lift up Sweden in prayer for its salvation and peace, alongside prayers for our persecuted brothers and sisters worldwide, in addition to our ongoing prayers for the peace of Jerusalem and the salvation of Israel. I'm Jonathan Hassan, wishing you a Shabbat Shalom Mevorach, and we will see you again on Monday for TV7 Israel News at the same time.